Hey YouTube, uh, I've got my personal truck here today. Uh, this one is a 2010 F-150 uh, Super Crew 4x4. And as you can see here, I've got the wheel off and this is the uh, rear brake um, assembly here. Um, today's job is to uh, replace the brake pads and the rotor. Um, I kind of let the pads get a little too thin. They're making noise. The rotors are the original and they're kind of junky. So I'm just gonna replace it all. But uh, before I started the job here, I noticed that the uh, brake caliper is held on with two bolts, as usual on these F-150s. There's two bolts, one down here and one up here. But as you can see, this upper one has this weird device on it. Um, so I thought I would talk about it. Um, this is something that you do see occasionally on these F-150s and some other makes of vehicles actually. But um, kind of hit and miss as to when you'll find them on an F-150. Um, in my experience, I've seen them a lot on the 2009 and 2010 models, and maybe some of the 2011s. But again, hit and miss. Sometimes you just have two standard bolts. Sometimes you have this guy here. And what this is, is a vibration dampener of sorts. Um, this device here is just kind of rubber filled. If you take it apart, you'll see that it's just basically a rubber coupling of sorts. Um, but that also poses a question, you know, how the heck do you get these brake calipers off if I've got this weird thing here? And the answer is quite simple, um, with an open end, 10 millimeter wrench. Um, but there's a caveat here. If you live in a climate where things get rusty, you can't use just your normal open end wrench. You have to have one that has these serrations in the, you know, the opening here. Uh, this one here is a Carlisle wrench. Um, you can get these at your local Napa auto parts store. Here's a part number. Hopefully you can see that. You know, so um, other manufacturers like Wright Tools has a, you know, open end wrench with that same sort of configuration with the teeth there. Um, yeah, Wright Tools, I believe they call that the Wright Grip. Proto Tools makes one and they call theirs the anti-slip. Um, Snap-on, I believe, is flank drive. And there's other manufacturers that do this. Um, I've got the Snap-on one, and I've also got the Carlisle. But today I'll use the Carlisle just to show that, you know, the tool that's available to the everyday Joe, you know, if you're, if you're not wrenching professionally, you don't need to spend a ton of money. Um, so we'll just use this one today. But again, very important that you use a wrench that has these uh, anti-slip teeth or whatever you want to call them in there. A regular open end will round off the um, round off the hex that's right over here. So um, I'm gonna set you down because these tend to be kind of tight, and hopefully we can get you a good angle here. All right, let's see if I can work around you. So, like I said, just get a good bite with your 10 millimeter wrench here, and hopefully um, it won't slip. And generally, these ones with the serrations won't. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Once that's loose, you can just turn it like so. Just spin it out, but then it hits the leaf spring. But that's okay. Once it's, once it's moving like this, uh, the caliper will come off once you get this bottom bolt off. And uh, you can just proceed um, with removing a brake caliper like you would on any, you know, typical um, break this setup like this. So, well, I guess I'll just keep the camera rolling. Might as well just make it a more in-depth video. So before I remove that uh, lower bolt, I'm just gonna pull on this caliper here to uh, kind of spread the um, spread the pads open a little bit so that we can get past this rust ridge on the, on the rotor. Okay. All right, that should go. Um, let me loosen this lower bolt here. And this is live, you're not, I didn't prep this. This truck's still on their original brakes. So they're not on there very tight. They're just tiny little, you know, M8 bolts, I believe. This guy you can just remove. Nothing's obstructing it. Let me set her aside here. 
Okay, so from here, um, as you can see, the caliper has two ears, or at least the brake pad has two ears securing it here, and one ear over here. So to remove the caliper from the rotor in the bracket here, you just gotta move it sort of like this. Sometimes you might need a little pry tool or something. It kind of just pivots out like that. Um, important, you don't want to hang the caliper by its hose. So what we'll do is we'll just put it on top of the leaf spring here. Um, pretty handy. Um, you can get some mechanics wire and tie it up to the frame if you'd like. Um, at this point, you can remove this bolt here. And um, if you really want, you can just replace this bolt with a standard bolt, you know, the same as this, the lower bolt. Um, this one seems to be in good shape still, so I'm just going to keep it. Um, sometimes you find these completely rotted off, and at that point I elect to replace the, the bolts with just a standard one. Um, they do make a little bit of a difference on the brake noise, so um, like I said, it's in good shape, so I'm going to keep it. So from here, I'm going to try to remove the brake rotor. Um, as you can see, I pulled on it earlier, it kind of just flopped, and we're lucky here. Um, there's these jacking bolts here, or holes for, for the jacking bolt if your brake cal or <laughs> sorry, your brake rotor gets stuck to the hub. But we've lucked out on my truck here. I think it's just going to pull free. <laughs> like that. All right. Oh, sorry, sorry for my poor camera work. All right. So next on the agenda is we need to remove the abutment clips from the brake caliper bracket. Um, unlike uh, most front brake calipers, the caliper bracket on the rear of these trucks is fixed to the rear axle. Um, it's actually part of the backing plate assembly and whatnot. Um, you, you do not remove these in normal service, so we just have to manually remove the abutment clips on the vehicle. Can't just put it on the bench, I guess is what I'm saying. Very important that you remove these. Your new brake pads will come with them if you've got you know good quality brake pads. But as you can see here, there's a ton of rust, ton of rust in here. So you definitely want to remove these. These clips are stainless steel, but it's just normal cast iron over there. And um, what happens is if you don't pull these off and clean it, you'll get some. Uh, it's called rust jacking, where this rust starts to swell the metal and push this into the brake pads, and that'll actually cause the brake pads to stick and make your brakes, you know, wear out prematurely, make your brakes drag, so your fuel economy is going to go down. In really bad cases, the wheel will lock up. So always remove these, these um, abutment clips, and... Um, so you can clean the clean this surface here. So I'll go ahead and continue removing this one. Um, I'm just using a little cat claw here and a hammer. I like this uh, this particular one here. It's it's handled my abuse here. I've used it for many years now, and it still looks almost new. All right. So. From here, <clears throat> I'm going to proceed to clean the surface up here. Um, we don't want to remove any metal, so we, don't, we definitely don't want to take a grinder to it or anything. Um, usually I'll use a, uh, a wire brush, maybe one that's mounted to a drill or something, and clean, clean that off until uh, you get all the rust particles off. 
Um, this one looks like it's starting to come clean fairly easily. Um, there's no real rust chunks that we need to remove. Um, you could also use a file to true up the surface. Um, that's what I had to do on the other side. So just true up the surface. You don't want to take too much material off. You're just trying to trying to just get rid of the rust chunks and stuff so that when you put the new abutment clips on, the pads will you know move very nicely here and you'll have good service life out of your next set of brakes. So I'll uh, shut the camera off here while I clean this up. I guess there's no real reason to keep it rolling while I'm doing that. It, it, it does take some time. So we'll get back to you when I'm done with that. Okay, so as you can see here, I got the little surface here cleaned up with a file and wire brush. It's nice and smooth, no, no rust chunks on it anymore. Um, just, just smoothed it out a bit. Um, so before we install the new abutment clips, we'll go, go give it a coat of some of this um, brake parts lubricant. Um, it's kind of like a silicone grease of sorts. Um, I like to use this underneath the abutment clips. It keeps the uh, corrosion down to a minimum, um, especially in a climate like here in coastal Alaska. Um, you don't need to put a whole ton of it on, I guess, but just uh, give it a good little coating here um, just to give it a fighting chance. Some people just use regular old um, grease, but I like to use stuff that's rated for um, the sort of heat that a brake system might see, especially if it's a truck that gets used for towing, which occasionally this one does. So, something like this. We'll clean up our excess later. Okay, I just wanna get all the machine surface here. Or, um, cleaned up and coated. So in the, the brake pad uh, box, we get, we've got some new abutment clips. The um, more premium line brake pads uh, almost always come with these ones. Um, I don't really recommend using brake pads that are of less quality than what was originally put on from the factory. Uh, and these just get pushed back on. Sometimes you might need to use a little hammer or something to get them started. So I'll just give it a light tap. that. Something similar here. Let's try to do this. All right. So that's properly seated. Um, we'll try to clean up the excess splooge here. But I will just keep that over here, over that bare metal. Um, it's always gonna rust a little bit, but just giving a little coating like that, it's good. I don't, I don't recommend having any on the abutment clip on the outside though, where the pad rides. So another check that I like to do here is I grab one of the pads and just make sure, you know, make sure they fit here. Um, if you don't take these abutment clips off and clean up that rust, like I said, you'll have some rust jacking that can cause these pads to get stuck. You want these pads to be able to slide on that surface. All right, so next up is we will grab the caliper here and remove the pads from the caliper. I guess in retrospect, if I was thinking, I would have done this first so that we wouldn't get dirt all over everything. Um, so the inner pad just clips into the caliper using these uh, rose clips. And actually, 
we need to remove the outer one first. Um, there's a spring clip here and there's a couple locating tabs here. So you need to push the pad in towards the inside of the caliper and then slide it out. So sometimes you can just do that like I just did there. Um, if you don't have enough hand strength, then you can use a little screwdriver or pry bar to help you with that. So like that, see those uh, tabs here that go into the holes? And uh, I definitely got my mileage out of those pads, huh? And then now the uh, inner pad should come out like so. That's called the rose clip. All right, um, some checks that we'll want to do first here is make sure these caliper slides um, move very freely just with finger pressure. Um, if these uh, slide pins get stuck, you typically will see uneven wear on your brake pads. Um, and also, um, so you see here, we do have some uneven wear. Um, I'm thinking that was due to the fact that there was some rust on the underneath the abutment clips that was causing uh, causing the pads to stick. So these um, slide pins are good to go. Um, you want to inspect the boots, make sure there's no tears. If you don't have any tears and it's good to be reused otherwise you'll either need to get some new pins or um, replace the caliper okay so now that we've got the brake pads off of the caliper the next step is to compress the piston on the caliper so um, we'll use a brake compression tool like, like this one <clears throat> Never fails. If you're gonna drop something, you're gonna drop it in your pan of liquid. So in these trucks, the pistons just need to be pushed straight through. Um, there's some vehicles where you actually need to um, turn the piston as you're pushing it in, but in this case, you just want it to go straight in. Um, you can use a C-clamp in that case, you know, but I've got the tool here, so we'll use it. And you can rent these, rent these tools at AutoZone or, you know, O'Reilly's or um, a lot of parts places will rent the tool out if you don't want to buy it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just slowly compressing the piston. Um, another thing to note is you want to check your master cylinder to make sure there's enough space in the reservoir. Because as you push this piston in, your brake level, brake, brake, brake fluid level will rise and you don't want to overflow your reservoir. Um, so I went ahead and checked it. Um, it was below the uh, max mark. So we'll definitely have plenty of space for this fluid to push into the uh, reservoir. So we're good there. So just slowly push the piston back in. There's no reason to force it. Um, I'm also kind of feeling to make sure this piston's going in smoothly. If it's kind of jerky going in, I might elect to replace it. But as you can see here, it went in rather smoothly. Um, so next thing we're going to do is check the seal that goes around the piston. Sometimes they get uh, little air bubbles in it. You want the seal to uh, retract just like this. If you got a little air bubble, you can grab a, a little pick tool do not puncture the seal, but instead just grab the lip of the seal and pull it to let the air out, and then you can release it. But in this case, it uh, <clears throat> it uh, compressed very nicely here. The seal is intact, and um, yeah, no bubbles. So next step uh, that I probably will not show on camera is I'm just going to take a little brush here and clean the surface of the piston here, as well as the ears here that contact the outer pad. You want to make sure these surfaces are as clean as you can get it and knock off any, you know, loose crusty stuff like here. You don't want that in your brake system. So I'll do that off camera and we'll resume the camera as soon as I'm done. All right, so I forgot a step here. Um, very important one if you live in the salt belt or in a really salty, crusty, corrosive prone environment 
uh, you definitely want to well, a make sure the face of your um, hub or axle here is clean which it is um, secondly is you want to spray it down with something so that um, in the future if you need to take the rotor off it's less likely to get stuck to the surface here um, in this case I'm going to use some fluid film I've had really good luck with fluid film over the years so I'll cover the parking brake pad so I don't spray the fluid film onto the, the parking brake shoes I mean just put a little coating on just to give this a fighting chance try not to get the uh, studs too much there that should be good enough so that the rotor won't stick onto hub here now we offer it up to the hub and then now we'll uh, put the uh, caliper on so let me adjust the camera angle here so basically just reverse of how we, re we removed it keep in mind you do not want this hose to be twisted um, it's just not a good idea you can shorten the hose life um, can cause all kinds of weird issues so when you mount the caliper on you want to make sure that there's no twist in that hose so again backwards of how we removed it we will put the bottom end in first align them with the abutment clips and if you notice here it's not going on smoothly it's probably because this guy here uh, needs to be pushed in the caliper slide pin All right, so once you get this uh, more or less engaged like that, you just push it the rest of the way. Um, there's this um, anti-rattle spring here that you'll want to maybe push in with your thumb and then slide the caliper the rest of the way. Okay, and uh, you may have to push the slides a little bit just to get those out of the way and it should just fall into place like that. And yet, again, I forgot something else that just shows that I'm human. Um, that dampener um, bolt, we need to put that into the caliper before we offer it up to the, to the hub here. So let me go find where I put that and we will continue on. All right, I found where I misplaced the, uh, the upper bolt here. So we'll just slide the uh, caliper off of the uh, bracket here again. We'll just put the uh, bolt in place, put the bolt in place and push the slide back because again there's no clearance to with a leaf spring in the way. So again mount it in from the bottom first and then move the slide out of the way so that things can engage and then we'll put both bolts in and we're almost done. So again, using the same open end wrench with the serrations in it, we will tighten that upper bolt. I'll just use a closed box stand for the bottom one. I uh, don't remember the torque spec off the top of my hand, head here, but um, basically as tight as you can get it with one hand with a short wrench like this, that's more than sufficient. But I will look up the torque specs for those of you that um, don't have a calibrated torque hand like I do and post those in the video description. If that's all the more tight you ever need to go with those. They're small like M8 bolts. Definitely don't want to over tighten those. Um, so now we'll check here. The caliper is free. It's sliding just fine on its... On its um, slides here so you know you did a good job there um, the, the, the tangs here are definitely engaged we got the anti-rattle spring on the inboard side of the caliper bracket we're all good to go here um, 
So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of brake clean and clean off my fingerprints from the brake rotor. And then the mo one of the most important steps is to pump the brake pedal to make the piston come out and self-adjust to the new rotor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll maybe even see the, I'll keep the camera rolling so maybe you can even see that piston um, come out. Might be neat. Alright, so now we got the, uh, the, piston ex um, the piston expanded out, self-adjusted with the rotor. I'm going to go ahead and clean up and conclude the video. Um, just need to put the wheels back on and there's plenty of videos out there for that, so I won't bore you with the details. So once you get the brakes on, you will want to follow the brake pad manufacturer's recommendations for um, burnishing or seating the, breaking in the new brake pads. Um, seems like every manufacturer of brake pads has their own little special uh, break-in procedure. So you'll definitely want to look those up and uh, follow those for, for the best uh, brake life as well as brake performance. Um, it's a very important step that a lot of people forget. Definitely break in your brake pads. So anyway, I really hope this video was helpful for you. Um, if you like the video, please click the like button. Um, if you have any comments or concerns or constructive criticism, please leave that in the comments below. And if you haven't already, um, subscribe. Um, I try to post videos like this when I can think of it. Um, little helpful hints like that um, brake dampener bolt there. Um, and I try to keep it short and simple. So anyway, hope you guys are all having a good day, and we will see you next time. Thanks.